Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. The search continues for a missing North Dakota woman gone since the end of October. But as the weather worsens, Olivia Lone Bear's family is asking for help. Valley News team's Rose Itzkovitz has more. Fargo resident Ruth Buffalo is hundreds of miles from her tribe, Mandan, Hidatsa, and Arikara Nation, in the Newtown area of North Dakota. But a missing member is close to her heart. So Olivia Lone Bear went missing October 24th, and she is still missing. Her family is uh, well known throughout the community uh, in being good people and giving back to the community. That's why local tribe members like her are working on bringing supplies to the 32 year old mother of five's family. They've been searching since her October 24th disappearance and the weather's only getting worse. Western North Dakota, it snowed this morning and the water is starting to freeze. It's about 21 degrees out there currently. Making it harder to search in and out of the water. We have to keep in mind the Fort Berthold Reservation is a large area to cover. A million acres to be more specific. That's why they're using drones like this one to cover more ground in their search. <laughs> Olivia Lone Bear's brother Matthew says very little is known about her disappearance but she was last seen in a truck that she would often borrow. One thing you got to consider in this, we're right in the middle of the Bakken and we're on a reservation. There's so many people that think they can come on the reservation, do whatever the heck they want because they can't be prosecuted. Matthew himself worked on the Bakken oil field for more than six years. When the Bakken came up, there was, you know, the, the serious crime rate went up in the area. Uh, drug charges, uh, alcohol, um, abuse and all these other different things kept popping up now. But Fargo tribe member Ruth Buffalo says they're still holding out hope that Olivia Lone Bear is alive. The family has been searching diligently since October 24th and fatigue is setting in. Which is why she says even more than supplies, able volunteers are needed. In Fargo, Rose Itzkowitz, Valley News Live. Earlier reports say police suspect no foul play in Lone Bear's disappearance. A $10,000 reward is being offered for information leading to her discovery. The supply drive to benefit the search is at the Red Raven in Fargo. It runs through this Friday. Anyone with information on the whereabouts of Olivia Lone Bear can call the Tribal Police Tip Line 701-627-6141. Two classes had to be moved due to a strong sewer smell inside the Discovery Middle School today. A spokesperson with the Fargo School District says there was an issue with the sewer line at the school. Maintenance told them it was a dry sewer trap which can prohibit proper venting of gases. The district says the problem will be taken care of by tomorrow. Although they were not aware of anyone becoming sick, one parent contacted Valley News Live saying their child came home with a headache and nausea. Just as Hutch said it would, the snow ended and the wind continued. Let's check in with him to see if, the, uh, if Mother Nature's bite will ease tonight. Hutch? For some, we're seeing at least a decrease in the gusty nature of the winds, but the gusts do continue mainly to our east. As we went through our day yesterday, we saw a little bit of everything. Very heavy snow upwards of a foot in Roseau County and a lightning strike ripping this tree apart in Bemidji. Bonnie, thank you for uploading your photo there. Visibility is reduced in and around Lake of the Woods County through Bemidji where the winds are a little stronger and that light fluffy snow is continuing to blow. Wind gusts approaching 25 miles per hour throughout portions of northwest Minnesota. Throughout the day, the snow drifted across the road surfaces and this is what Highway 32 looks like between the Pennington and Red Lake County uh, border there. Thank you, Matt Dawkin, for uploading your photo. Dangerous wind chills will be the story tonight, along with very, very slippery road conditions persisting. Some cold air continues to migrate its way in. I'll tell you how low we go. And we'll talk a little bit about some warmer weather in the forecast. Details in a few minutes. Okay, I like the sound of that. Thank you, Hutch. You bet. And make sure you have the Valley News Live Storm Team weather app so that you can keep up with the weather anytime, anywhere. You'll get the latest forecasts and conditions so that you can plan your day. All you have to do is search VNL Weather in the App Store and then download it for free. Law enforcement in North Dakota are asking drivers to move over. The campaign is to bring awareness to drivers to move one lane over when they see flashing lights. According to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund, more than 150 U.S. law enforcement officers have been killed since 1999 after being struck by vehicles along America's highways. Lori Malafa was a highway patrol officer in Fargo. She was hit while she pulled someone over, and she says it's very important to obey this law. 
It's very important to move over. It keeps the responders safe, the people involved in the incident, as well as just people going by it. Gives us space to work too, and do what we need to do and get traffic open. In North Dakota, the move over law was implemented in 2001. There's a new service up and running for Minnesotans in case of an emergency. The statewide service allows you to send a text message to 911. State officials say text to 911 will be beneficial for people who are deaf or unable to speak, and it will allow victims who may not be able to talk while a crime is being committed a way to contact police. To use the device, a person would type 911 in the number field and then type the nature of the emergency and a location in the body of the text message. Dispatchers at all of the state's 104 emergency dispatch centers have been trained on the texting technology. Projections say the state of Minnesota is in a $188 million deficit for the current two-year financial cycle. And further down the road, the numbers look even worse, tacking on almost $400 million more to the deficit over the next three years. Federal budget changes could impact that projection, but the bleak outlook comes after a string of budget surpluses in recent years and more than $650 million in tax breaks passed by lawmakers earlier this year. The Minnesota legislature will look to fix these issues when they resume work on February 20th. Minnesota's tourism agency has removed a hacker who is peppering the agency's Facebook page with bizarre postings. Explore Minnesota said the agency and Facebook were able to identify the hacker and remove the hacker's access to the agency's page yesterday. The agency's Facebook account had been hacked since Monday morning. Explore Minnesota is working with Minnesota IT services and their cybersecurity team to ensure the highest level of security measures are in place. An agency spokesperson says that it was a totally random hacker and not someone who used to be employed by the agency. The agency's other social media channels were not affected. Explore Minnesota's Facebook page has more than 226,000 fans. For parents who may be worried about your children and some risky behavior, there are some positive trends that may help ease the stress. A new survey of North Dakota students shows that they are using less tobacco and wearing seatbelts more often. The results were released through the state and say North Dakota young people are also doing less texting and driving, even though it's still more common than officials would like. The Youth Risk Behavior Survey is done every two years across the country, and policymakers use the results to decide the best way to promote student health. Later on Valley News Live at 6, plans are approved that will shape downtown Fargo for years to come. Years ago, it would have been referred to as smoking in the boys' room. Up next, what dangers vaping can lead to with your son or daughter.